Um, Honourable Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for giving me the floor. Uh, Madam Speaker, this um, estimate, draft estimate of expenditure 2020 is indeed a very important document. The document before us, Honorable Speaker, is the lifeblood of this nation. As a result, as National Assembly members, we have to carefully look into these documents and to make sure that uh, a justice is done to the document. Honorable Speaker, uh, I will start with um, allowances. Honorable Speaker, the new allowances create from the Office of the President to judiciary, almost all the ministries in the country. Now, these new allowances, Honorable Speaker, I want the Honorable Minister to explain to us uh, how much is involved in these allowances. Because you can see, starting from Minister of Interior, you have a professional allowance you have a risk allowance, transport allowance, telephone allowance, responsibility allowance, special skill allowance, and so on. And not only the Minister of Interior, but all other ministries. Now, adding these allowances together, in my opinion, Honorable Speaker, I think uh, this takes almost half of this budget. So I am proposing or suggesting that uh, if we know the figures of these allowances, Honorable Speaker, as uh, stated in this document, we will be able to do justice. Because at least people are required to get allowance, but not an allowance that will hinder the, the progress of this country or the development of the country. Honorable Speaker, after having said that uh, I will go to the budget support, Honorable Speaker, the minister in the statement um, expressed, said that the revenue for recurrent development expenditure for the fiscal year 2020, that one contributes the factor and to achieve the net domestic borrowing NDB target of 1%. Cross domestic revenue for 2018 was primary as a result of non-disbursement of the budget support from our development partners. You did mention 3.4 million was factored as a budget support in 2018, but EU component of 25 million was received in respect of 2019 and not even in the 2018. Now, this budget support is something very important for our country, and uh, it is a, a projection. It is likely to come, or it is maybe not likely to come. Now, if we want to, I want to find out from the Minister of Finance, what are the conditions attached to this budget support for a country like ours, so that we can get this budget support. What are the conditions? I want to know that. Honorable Speaker, continuing on the, the same issue, Honorable Minister continue to mention 2019 project, project report support for EU and the World Bank, which comprise the bulk of the estimate budget support for 2019 did not materialize, as at the end of September 2019. He further said, he further mentioned that the World Bank budget support is unlikely to materialize due to slippage. And for that reason, 
non-realization of certain development policies, development policies operations. Now, this again is another area of concern to me, Madam Speaker, since it's a statement made by the Honorable Minister himself. This is the reason why I want to ask. In view of the statement referred on above, could the Honorable Minister kindly inform this august body the measures, the measures to be taken on slippage from non-realization of certain development policies, operations, and what mechanism have the Minister as Finance put in place to ensure that slippage refer in your statement uh, are taken care of, Honorable Speaker. It's a very important thing as a Minister of Finance when he talked about slippage. Really, I think there should be a measure to make sure that these slippage, slippages are certainly looked into. Again, what measures could you be able to give to this Honorable House that the EU 20, 20, 22 million euro expected to be received before the end of 2019 has been or will be received as expected. This is another area. This 22 million EU funding, when will it be ex uh, expect, uh, you expected that the, it expected that it will be received before the end of 2019? And as at now, we are almost at the 2019. What, what is the measures that you will take or negotiation that will take so that we can have this 22 million euro from the EU? Honorable Speaker, on the other issue, that is the medium term debt objective. The Honorable Minister also mentioned that the net domestic borrowing is expected to it's expected to be around 2.5%, which is 1.5% higher than the target. Now, this is another issue. 2.5, and the expectation is 1.5. Now, how does this money to raise up to 2.5? I want the minister to give me an answer to that. Now, on the issue of going by the above statement, could the Honorable Minister explain to this Honorable House the physical consolidation measures that your ministry has put in place to ensure that, to ensure that we are able to attain the medium-term debt structure, strategy objective, explaining that the net domestic borrowing of 1%, 1 of GDP taking into account of apparent challenges facing the country with regards to the financial situation. I want the minister to explain why it is this has been increased to 2.5 instead of 1% as expected. Honorable Speaker, after having said that I would go to the estimate itself, this is the statement that the minister gave, which I am referring to. Now I will go to the statement and um, I will go to the statement that the Minister of uh, um, the Minister of Defence, Honourable Speaker, the Minister of Defence, uh, in the budget, the 2020 budget estimate is 737.603. That is the Minister of Defence. That is the budget. But going by the the development budget, Madam Speaker, development budget for the the Minister of In Minister of Defence, Honourable Speaker, you can see that it's 17 million 100,000. Having considered the army, most of uh, the army officers, especially the young ones, are outside the barrack on renting. Now, in the area of development, I would have loved to see something huge, something more than this 17 million, so that the army can take construction of their own quarters. That will enable the soldiers to stay in their own quarters. But with this development uh, money for the development pro program for the National Army, really 17 million, it is in my own opinion, is very small. 
And I think the minister should do something about that. Because we want to keep our soldiers in the barracks rather than scattering all over in the country. So I think that's a note to be taken. Again, on the, on the Minister of uh, Defense, we go to the Minister of Interior again. Honorable Speaker, Interior has a lot of components of the security. You have the prisons, you have the uh, law enforcement agency, drug enforcement agency, you have the police, you have the immigration, fire service. So all these components are within the Ministry of Interior. Now, coming to also their uh, development budget again, Honorable Speaker, that also come to 17 million 100, just the same as the Minister of Defense. I think this is an issue that needs to be looked into. Our security forces, especially the places where they're going to live, is a cause for concern. Uh, when you go to the prison, for instance, I will give an example for prison. Honorable Speaker, prison staff quarters are just very bad. Are just very bad. As a result, I think from this budget, if not all are being built or properly repaired, I think uh, we should do something about this thing. It's, it's, it's very sad, and I'm, I'm with the opinion, Honorable Speaker, these amounts are very small for development program of these uh, ministries. Now, going on to going on to agriculture, Madam Speaker, it's a cry for everybody, every citizen. We all said agriculture is the backbone of this country, Madam Speaker. Therefore, I think uh, the only way that this country can move forward economically is agriculture. Agriculture, that's my honest opinion, and I don't think we should deceive ourselves. We have the potential. The land is there. The water is there. What stops us as a nation, as a country, to develop our country, uh, agriculture? With all these loans that we are taking, if only we are serious with agriculture, if only we invest properly in agriculture, irrigation system of farming, where there is no fresh water, I think this country will be the one of the best country in the sub-region. So agriculture is very important. And uh, the amount of money allocated for agriculture, Madam Speaker, I think uh, this needs to be revisited. This needs to be looked into, uh, because this is only the way that can help us um, to this is only the way that can help us to make sure that this our country develop. Again, Madam Speaker, as I said, if government cannot, government cannot really invest in agriculture, then I think there could be a way out, a way out to get the real serious investors, serious investors that will come into the country to help, that will help. Because when you go to Kafuta here, the farm there, they are, they are producing almost every week, of every month, they are producing something, exporting it. What stops us as a country? So really, agriculture is very, very important, Madam Speaker. From there, I will go to Um, I will go to Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, Madam Speaker. Well, this time around, it's not enough, but I think uh, the allocation given to the Minister, 656.746, um, it cannot build roads, but I think uh, compared to what they have last year, I think this is fairly okay with me. But we, in the Gambia, we have a problem. We have a problem, Madam Speaker, building roads, building schools, sustainability is our problem. There is no culture of maintenance in this country. If a loan of two billion is given to us as a nation, invest it on road construction and things like that, after a period, that road will just wash up. And then we will think of again arranging a money 
or taking loan to come and rebuild those roads. I think there should be a maintenance team at the Ministry of Works, serious maintenance team, that will make sure that roads built properly are being taken care of. Madam Speaker, finally, Madam Speaker, I will come to this allowance again. Let the Minister, because it's almost under all ministries, allowances, 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 allowances. It's under all ministries. And this involves a lot of money. If you calculate all these things, Madam Speaker, it's in, it takes almost half of this budget. Now, we want the Minister to explain to us, as an as assembly, to explain to us why all these new allowances create for the various ministries. It is very important, because if having calculated all these things, Honorable Speaker, it's a, it's a lot of money. And then the salaries, they are there. Why creating these new allowances? This is what we want to know. On that note, Madam Speaker, I thank you very much for giving me the floor. Thank you very much.